Hello everyone, I'm Dave. This is Nobody's Nose. Today, we are gonna take a look at the Discord 200 box set. This release, the 200th release for Discord Records, contains the first six seven inches that this label put out in the early 80s. It also includes a bonus record that was not part of the deal, I believe, when they first advertised this. I think that just got added in as a little something extra, but we'll see once we get in there. If you don't know who Discord Records is, and why this would be significant. Um, you should keep watching the video, uh, but I think for the people who pre-ordered this box set, this was something that was a long time coming. It was pretty exciting, and uh, certainly that was the case for me. Um, but if you want to stick around and find out, go ahead either way. The six records that come in this box set are some of the most sought after, like grail records people look for when they're collecting punk and hardcore of this style. All of the music has been available for a long time. The Minor Threat 7 inches, the self-titled In My Eye 7 inch that are in here, were released as the well-known Minor Threat 12 inch. And the other four 7 inches, including Henry Rollins' band SOA, were released on a four old 7 inches 12 inch that was available for a long time. I've had that record numerous times. It's come through my collection and been sold off or traded. I never listened to it that much unlike the Minor Threat that I played constantly. But it was one of those things where I felt like I wanted the originals. I wanted, like, I didn't pay a lot of attention to the 12-inch because it didn't feel like having the original records. And one of the reasons I was excited about this box set is because I made a rule for myself a long time ago that I would not look at these records when other people had them in their collections I would not look at them until I owned them. Now, that specifically went for the Minor Threat 7 inches. A couple years ago, a buddy had one and he said, take a look at it. I picked it up, I'd seen the cover before. I handed it back to him and said, no, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this. Now, maybe that sounds strange, but some of you probably understand. There's something about vinyl records, especially like Holy Grail vinyl records. It's not just the cover. It's not just the music that's on there. You've heard the music before. It's the way they did the layout, how they how they put the lyrics in there, what the liner notes say. What do the labels on the vinyl look like? What does the vinyl actually look like? Like what kind of, is it colored vinyl? Even if it's black vinyl, there's variations in that sometimes. You just how the grooves look, what's written in the matrix. All of that stuff is part of the experience of a record. And I didn't want to have that without actually having the records. And maybe that sounds crazy, but I just kept it as something, something to look forward to. And I thought I would just have to wait until I made enough money to start a real serious collection again and drop the hundreds or sometimes thousands of dollars it takes to get any of these records. And here, I'll throw up some real quick sold comps from Discogs so you can see what these things go for. But then last year, they offered this thing as a pre-sale and I thought, well, that's a, that's a little bit of a cheat. They said that it was gonna be the same layouts. Now I've heard from people that they're not exactly the same. And I think, I think the main thing is the paper is different. You probably couldn't go out and find the same paper that people were printing on in, in the early 80s. So that may be what it is. I'm gonna find out in a minute. And then once I ordered it, they said that, um, you know, it took a long time. They said, hey, there's a bonus record in there too. There's a Slinky's record. So we'll look at that once we get in there. But why don't we take a look at this box and then open it up and, and get to it. Okay, nice shipping box, Discord 200 screen on the outside. I won't flip it over so you can see the address, but sealed right there. This is a good way to ship records. It's got that crush protection. And you see it came in handy here because we had a little bit of a crush but it didn't touch any vinyl or cover or print or anything. So, all right, let's go. Hey, thank you and thank you. Written in two, two types of handwriting. I'm gonna assume that's Ian and Jeff, but that is printed, not written. Okay, that's a glare on it. That is nice. Shrink wrapped. It's 
kind of hard to see, but in clear ink, it says first six Discord records. If you can't see it there, I'll see if I can catch it here. Back cover. And then first six, first six on all the sides. This is nice. There's not a lot of movement in there. A little bit. Not enough to probably do any damage unless it really got... I mean, if this was constant back and forth something could break through but it's pretty solid to say records in this box set the slinkies who cares released in 2021 five songs from 1979 teen idols minor disturbance state of alert no policy minor threat self-titled government issue legless bull minor threat in my eyes and youth brigade possible all of these records with the exception of this bonus record were released from 1980 to the end of 1981. Okay. A picture of these fellas, two guys who have been so influential over the years. My guess is there's going to be a, a more recent photo of this exact, as close to this angle as possible inside. Let's see if they do that. Open it up here. Uh, I want to be careful with this. Lift the lid. Nice. Just to keep things a little bit more solid inside the box, we got some bubble wrap. Nothing else here, so I'm going to set this aside. And first thing out is a booklet. First six Discord records. Printed in black, what's printed on clear on the front, so you can see it. Pictures of the Discord house, a famous location. Some writing from Ian and Jeff. Pictures of the records. Pictures of the guys in the old days. <laughs> okay, hold on. While not the exact same photo as on the uh, on the back, it is still pictures of them in the house when they were young, doing the early work in the early days of uh, Discord Records. All right. Let's move on to the records. First one out, Teen Idols, Minor Disturbance EP. Okay, I can already see what they've done, and I will explain. I will explain this in a minute, but let's let's go through them. Teen Idols, Minor Disturbance EP, Discord Records number one, Discord Records number two, SOA, No Policy. Hmm. Minor Threat, self-titled. Yeah, it's not the real thing, but it's still giving me chills. Government Issue, Legless Bull. Minor Threat, In My Eyes. Youth Brigade, Possible. And then here we go, the Slinkies. I think it's called Who Cares? Yeah, Who Cares EP. It says... Uh, Score one for capitalism right there. Whew. Definitely, if you take a look at the price of these box sets right now on Discogs, that's true. I don't think that was intended, but it was inevitable. They are, last time I checked, multiple copies of this thing had sold in the few days that it had been out, and none of them had sold for less than $200. Remember, this was $55 plus shipping to order. And, uh... Yeah, I, the price will probably come down as people put more up there, but who knows? Okay, so what I was laughing about when I first looked at this Teen Idols record, remember I said I wanted to see the original layouts? 
Well, all of these covers are nice, new, professionally made record sleeves. All the same style, all the same paper type cardstock. And I'm going to have to film with this so you can see it. But it's made to look like the original layout where it has a flap that is folded over. That's not real though. That's just a scan of an original that would have looked that way. It was probably cleaned up a little. Here's what I mean. This here is just in the print. Now, one of the things that Ian talked about in a lot of interviews was when they were figuring out how to do covers in the early days, they would just unfold a record cover and trace it out and then lay their record out that way and get it printed and then cut it out and fold it and glue them together. So I'm assuming that the original versions of these have those kind of covers and these are meant to look that way. I'm going to still need the originals of this someday because I'm going to need to see those covers made that way and hold them in my hand and feel what that paper feels like. But we'll, we'll move on from here. There's nothing I can do about it. Let's start with Teen Idols. Black vinyl. Very simple label. I have to assume this is what this is what the original looks like. And a poster lyric sheet. It does say CNP 1980 2020. So slight differences, but I have to assume that this is what the lyric sheet looks like in the original. Okay. SOA no policy. Henry Garfield on vocals. That's Henry Rollins. If you don't know, I'm sure most of you do know. Nice green vinyl. A smaller fold out lyric sheet, standard size page. A little harder to read. You'd have to really want to know what they were saying, but if you were following along with this, you could figure it out, even if the handwriting was a little hard to read. Those aren't going to stay there. In my life, there's probably few things that have ever been as significant as the impact of the music on this 7-inch record. This has the song Straight Edge on it. Hmm. It says Discord Records number three, Minor Threat, putting DC on the map, black vinyl. Right, more of a legal size fold out. I've seen this image many times. This was reused. Um, not sure if I've seen the lyrics written this way, though. That's, that's nice. Yeah, I'm going to need to uh, read along and see if there's any difference from the way I know these songs, the way they're written here. That's cool. Government issue, legless bowl. John Staub, R.I.P. I listened to quite a bit of government issue. Their later stuff, I never spent any time with this actual recording, which I probably should have. Lyric sheet looks a lot like the minor threat one, like there. Okay, so this also says putting DC on the map. That must be something they were just doing on their labels. Black vinyl, same kind of label design. Again, handwritten. <laughs> For booking info, it's got John Staub's address and phone number. I'm assuming that phone number is uh, probably no longer good. 
And notice this one doesn't have any kind of thanks list on it. I don't think the minor threat did either. One of the things as the years went on with records, people would put thanks lists, you know, in their records. And a lot of times they would thank bands. And a lot of people use those thanks lists to track down other bands that they might be interested in. And so many, I mean, pre-internet days, so many bands that you would listen to, uh, you would check out in the first place because you saw them, you saw them in the thanks on a record. And a threat in my eyes. Hey, this record has a thanks list on the back. And what does it say? It thanks to Skip Don Tesco, the Necros band to check out, right? Howard Wolfing, probably didn't get that name right. Jello Biafra and the DC Punks. All right, we'll see what it looks like on the inside. It's going to be a regular letter size lyric sheet. Ah, now, this is like a pink red. That's a very cool color. And the, the label has changed. Doesn't say anything about putting DC on the map, and it's got limp down the side. I don't know if it was a split, split label thing, or, yeah, I don't know what that's all about. Since I've never seen it in the past, I had never known to inquire about it, but now I do. Ah, uh, way more pro. Yeah, we're getting out of the handwritten stuff and getting into some layout stuff. A classic minor threat lettering. And it says minor threat November 80 to September 81, so they must have been broken up at this point. But they did get back together and do an LP. Classic. First record I ever bought was a Minor Threat record. And it was a 7-inch, but it was the Salad Days 7-inch. I bought it at Time Travelers in Seattle when I was 15 years old. It had not been out very long at that point. But these records were nowhere to be found by then. All right. Youth Brigade, possible. Not the California Youth Brigade. Different guys. Okay. Black vinyl. The label looks a little more standard, but it doesn't say anything about DC on the map. RIP Youth Brigade. Seems like this band would have been broken up by the time this record came out. Anyone who's done a label knows the pain of that. That's just a thing that happens. They definitely do have a nice thanks list on here. They thank the Untouchables, Teen Idols, Necros, of course, Minor Threat, a bunch of other people, Greg Anderson, Bad Brains. I'm looking for some other band names in here that we would know. It's kind of fun. Some of it's typed out. Some of it's then written in in pen as if they remembered after the fact. Void. Oh, yeah. Can't forget Void. That leaves us with the Slinkies. And once again, this one definitely does have those edges made to look like the original was glued together. I, I have to admit, I'd be surprised if they were still actually making their record covers that way. Six records in, because this is Discord number six. But um, I don't know, maybe maybe the place they were getting them printed was was doing them that way. But it still it still has that handmade look to it. So who knows? It was all it was across a two year period. So. Can't, I wouldn't be too surprised if they actually were sitting around gluing these records by hand. And then the oldest record and also the newest record in the box, Slinkies. Slinkies is made up of Gordy, Jordy, Grindle, Jeff Nelson on drums, Ian McKay on bass, and Mark Sullivan on vocals. Recorded on cassette tape by Andy Nelson in Jeff's parents' basement in Washington, D.C. on August 21st, 1979, three days prior to their one and only show in Brian Fox's parents' garage. This is a punk record. And it says, all songs by the Slinkies, lyrics by Henry Garfield, who's Henry Rollins. So are we going to assume that he, I guess he must have written the lyrics for this. The songs are called Go to Alaska, I Drink Milk, Conservative Rock, Who Cares, and Trans Am. Okay. Nice three-panel fold-out, full color. This honestly looks like uh, 
high school photos and the like. All right, there's a whole story here about how this all came together. Okay, I got it wrong. It was Go to Alaska was written by, by Henry. Not, not all of the... Not all the stuff. I didn't see the asterisk. I should have seen that. So yes, Henry wrote the lyrics to go to Alaska. The lyrics that are not included here, so I can't uh, say them out loud. See how embarrassing they are. I guess I'm just going to have to listen and see if I can uh, figure them out. Black vinyl. Nice solid black. Can't see through it in the light. Captain Crunch with his eyes crossed out. And then on the back, it looks like uh, Woodrow Wilson High School. Washington, D.C. I'm assuming that's a school they all went to together. I'm not going to play any of this stuff here. Get copyright strikes against my channel. Not bad. Totally worth it. Um, does it make me any less interested in having the originals? No, I think if anything now I'm more interested in having the originals so I can compare them to these and see how what the differences are. I've just made things worse for myself. Oh, hey, I got to break in here to say one more thing. So I didn't just buy one box set. I bought, well, two box sets, three box set. Okay, well, this one, the one that we just looked at, but then this one, but this is my glance. I, I bought this for the woman I live with. This is hers. So, but it was also this one. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with the extra one, but now I know I'm going to give this one away. But if you want to find out how I'm going to do it, I will be talking about how I'm going to give this one away over on my other channel, Quarter Flips. Quarter, like a quarter and flips, like you flip a quarter. Just look it up, you'll see a picture of me holding a sword. That's my other channel. And pretty soon, I will announce the competition, basically, to give this thing away. It's just gonna be like a simple drawing. There'll be some instructions on how to do it. I'm going to do it along with my 1,000 subscriber celebration over there, which is coming up very soon. So go over to Quarter Flips and take a look, and maybe you can get a free Discord Records box set for yourself. All right, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. See if I get some other records I can unbox on here sometime. I don't know if this is going to be a regular thing, but uh, this channel is full of my podcast where I talk to a whole bunch of people from a bunch of bands. A lot more recent bands than these, but all bands and people basically that were influenced by these people on these records. So go check those things out if you uh, if it sounds like your thing. Or even if it doesn't, go check it out and see what you think. Um, yeah, thank you. See you next time.